Hello everybody and welcome to Fintech Futures. Uh, we are here today at the Open Banking Expo in London and I'm very, very happy to be joined now by Olga Karablina of EcomPay. Olga, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. Oh, I'm very, very happy to be here and talking with you uh, today at the Open Banking Expo. Before we go any further, we must give our viewers a, a little snapshot of who you are. So if you could just give us um, a description of, of uh, your, your job title and the company that you work for, please. Great. Well, my name is Olga Karablina. I work for EcomPay. I've been with the company for over seven years. My role sounds like a payment product development and a partnership relationship. Basically, my job is to make sure that we have payment methods which help clients, online merchants, to accept payments of all over the world. Fantastic. Well, it's very good that you're here at, at, at the Open Banking Expo. Um, and we have a, a very interesting conversation ahead of us. Um, I think the first thing that I would really like to ask you is about the, the current trends and landscapes that surround open banking. Um, what, how, what are the, uh, the most prevalent trends that you're seeing and what are the core elements that businesses should be seeking to implement? Very good question, thank you. Well, the trends are changing constantly. And with being in fintech, we always have to run and run forward because trends is changing and changing. So today, with open banking, I think we are at the stage of acceptance of open banking. We started to develop our product about four years ago, when the world was kind of open banking. Oh, what's that? It was like a hype. Today, when we talk to people around, we talk to our clients, open banking, oh great, do you have it? So people start to know it better. People start to ask him for open banking. So I think today we're in a stage of acceptance of open banking. The good example would be Apple Pay, adding open banking technology into the app. So it's uh, instant uh, access to the account balance of users of our, our Apple app. So it's a very good example that today, open banking is not just a hype anymore, it's something that people are using today. So yeah, the trends obviously, uh, next big thing and the big talk is uh, recurring payments or VRPs and open banking. It was a buzz for quite a few time already. So I think it's something that people need to think, need to consider, wait for it for commercial use of VRPs. Recurring payments is a big thing in e-commerce. For us as a card acquirer for 10 years already, we see a significant part of the volume with the recurring payments. So as soon as VRP are there and commercial user are VRPs ready, I think it's a big next step in the industry of open banking. Mm. Oh, definitely. I, I wholeheartedly agree with you in terms of the, the VRPs. We're seeing a lot of that in the, in the conversations that we're having in this room today. Um, and I think just the, the energy that's here is a real testament to those trends that are, are really here to stay. As with anything in financial services, its success sort of hinges on a really uh, strong regulatory environment. How do you see the regulatory environment uh, supporting those trends and more specifically which region do you think is leading the way in that respect? Yeah. It's a nice combination of words, regulations to support the business. It's the way it should work usually and uh, shouldn't be an obstacle of uh, moving forward or developing new products. Obviously regulation is there. We know PSD2, PSD3 is coming out soon. Is it, uh, I think we're in a stage today where the regulation doesn't have as much impact already now. It's more to still develop with the product, educating the merchants, educating the user to, to know about open banking, to feel secure with open banking. So it's much more than just the regulation behind it. 
But obviously, UK is the leader. In a, if you speak about the Europe and UK regions, I'm not talking about other countries like Canada, Australia. They're all behind. They're also like getting the an open banking space. Not even getting there. It got there already, so they're progressing quite well. So yeah, regulations is there. Uh, I'm I'm really looking for. I really want that. Uh, open banking providers do follow the regulations and take it seriously. Uh, we, we've been on the market for a while, so we take it really uh, on the level uh, of, uh, let's say, card acquiring uh, level with uh, working with a Visa and MasterCard. So for us, uh, compliance regulations is a it's fundamental part of open banking product at eCompare. Mm. No, that's, that's exactly hitting the nail on the head, you know, the, the, the level of compliance in open banking, and especially because it's, it's data sharing, essentially, and it's, it's sensitive data, so you really have to have the compliance there. Um, and in terms of just reflecting on what you said with, with the UK, I think, you know, we've done so well to cultivate an environment, you know, companies like EcomPay have been ma major players in the success of open banking in this country. You know, I, I, I believe on a whole in July, we hit that 11, we, we surpassed the 11 million payments milestone. Uh, I'm just going up and up and up. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a really, really exciting time in the market right now. Um, when we look to those businesses that maybe want to adopt open banking or they want to develop, new products or have it integrated into their existing systems. What are the best practices for them to do that? What would you recommend? Well, yes, um, my first recommendation is to choose your partner wisely. Open banking, it's a combination of the words, but it's so much more behind the terminology. Open banking can be used for various scenarios. So I think the first question that the business need to ask themselves is why do you want open banking? What do you want to achieve it? My theory is that open banking is not just a payment method, is not something that easily just it can be explained in a, in, a, in a short words. Open banking is a bigger, is how you uh, reach uh, in your business. Do you want to cut costs on operations? Does open banking uh, help in it? Yes. Can you go cross border and accept payments in uh, various countries rather than your original countries? Yes. So open banking, it's really something. It's, it's a way how to get to the point, how to get to result. So my advice for businesses out there is to ask themselves, what do you want? What do you want from open banking? And in order to understand that, you need to choose your provider, your partner wisely. The partner who understands the product, the partner who can work with the product, can create the different scenarios, can help you to see through the product. Uh, what we do at Ecompay as well, we don't offer open banking as a payment method. We have, a, we have a cases when we helped merchants to reduce the costs, operational costs, by uh, offering on top of open banking uh, automated reconciliation, for example. So it's enhancing your standard account-to-account -account approach. I mean, open banking, as I mentioned before, four years we're now talking about open banking. So it's time to move on from your standard account-to-account. -account. It's time to enhance it. It's time to really use the technology to solve the cases, to help businesses to achieve their goals. Uh, that's why we are adding quite a lot of features on top of your standard open banking. We call it advanced, which kind of reflects <laughs> uh, the reality. So advanced account-to-account -account open banking, what we offer. So yeah, it's um, the best practices is just choose your partner wisely. Make sure that the partner understands both your business understand the potential of open banking and understand the way to find this perfect route to achieve both results and help uh, with the open banking help. Mm. That's, that's really, really interesting what you've said because, you know, yes, we, we are 
dealing with open banking, but it, it's, it's companies like EcomPay who are who are actively taking it to the next level. I mean, you can see some of the some of the things listed behind us here, uh, some of the areas that you're dealing with. You're not just dealing with open banking. You're dealing with you know an advanced it's sort of like this next generation of open banking in a in a way. But you know, with that being said, it's not easy, and it's uh, the implementation, you know, of the te technology can be quite complex at times. What you know, as an implementation partner, what are the main challenges or obstacles? that you see your, your, your clients encountering and how can they be overcome? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very true indeed. Uh, the complexity of open banking can be seen for those who are first time, let's say, <laughs> to industry. But I mean, EcomPay has been in industry, payments industry for over 10 years. We have created in-house a gateway, a platform. So we have a very good expertise in creating new products. So when the time of open banking came four years ago, we didn't create a new infrastructure for that. We have our infrastructure that we use for other payments. So for us, it was quite of, I wouldn't say easy, but uh, taking the open banking technology, understanding the legacy of it, understanding what we want to have, and using our experience of uh, many years, using our infrastructure, we created a product which can be easily implemented to any businesses online. There are definitely some obstacles, not even some, many obstacles, I would say, that one has to overcome. Um, the easy banking rails. I mean, today, uh, what consumer expect from the payments? Frictionless, trust, and instant. Uh, so, few clicks, like when you pay with Apple Pay, for example, you understand it, you just a few clicks, face ID and it's done. We want to achieve the same with open banking. To, in order to achieve that, we obviously invest extra time, resources in, the, in enhance, enhancing the product. So obstacles can be uh, IBAN discrimination. Uh, so basically open banking is uh, based on the banking rails. It's, so it's nothing new, I mean, it's been there for years. So, however, if, you, if you're a business and you have bank account in Germany and you sell in Spain, and it's not cross-border. I mean, today European Union should be a cross-border transaction. However, uh, it can be treated so, and especially then SEPA standard will be applied, so, uh, not SEPA instant and um, you pay Friday evening. You decided to go online shopping, you made your payment online, and like, okay, I made the payment, the money gone from my bank account. And the shop on the other side haven't received the money yet because it went from Spain to Germany, it's standard separates, and then the shop will not issue you or your product because, I mean, I don't see the money yet. So money is in transaction. It's still going from Spain to Germany. If you pay it on Friday night, it can come to the shop on by Monday morning. So all weekend you're sitting there guessing, am I going to get my perfect dress <laughs> for next event? <laughs> well, no. That's why that is an obstacle. So what we're doing at EcomPay, we are localizing uh, open banking payments, basically introducing local IBANs in, in each different country to make sure that the payment is done via instant local rails. So the payment is instant, is confirmed, it's guaranteed. Uh, just standard account-to-account -account payment in open banking, it's not guaranteed payment method, it's just payment initiation. Uh, so we build on top, we get this money, we aggregate the funds, and we, make, we send the uh, confirmation to the merchant saying, okay, your money is safe with us, you can issue the products. It's important when it's, we speak about the large checks. So if you buy like a TV of, I don't know, thousands of <laughs> euros, which good TV, uh, you want to make sure that the shop got the money and they, they feel secure to, issue, to, to ship the product. So that is something we overcome. So local IBANs, local uh, rails, uh, banking rails, instant payments, instant in, instant out, because Today, if you want to do refund to the cart, it can take up to three, four days to get your money back. So basically, the shop is losing four days of shopping. 
So I'm a consumer and I'm waiting for my refund for three, four, five days. So five days, I'm sitting without shopping. If I have my refunds returned to me as a refund instantly, I can spend the next five days shopping again. So it's increase of the volume. So as I mentioned before, open banking payments is not just a payment method. It's something that helps you really to reduce costs, increase volumes, increase your profit. It's just a matter how you operate, how you apply open banking technology into the existing business. So we can help with that using our expertise and the knowledge. I mean, those are, those are very, very attractive benefits to, to a business looking to adopt open banking. And the, you know, you've given them multiple reasons as to why they should come to EcomPay. From, from the conversations that I've had with the industry at large, um, one of, I want to say concern, but not in like a detrimental way, in, um, in open banking is sort of the, the use of, of really quite sensitive uh, consumer information. What measures do you have in place to safeguard that information during open banking transactions? Yeah, very good question. I mean, the trust, the security is something that keeps consumers happy and uh, keeps returning consumers. So they trust your brand, they, they make sure that while they shop with your uh, uh, business, they feel secure. So definitely data security, we take it very seriously at Ecompay. So obviously we PCI this as regulated, uh, however, making payments uh, in uh, open bank rails, there is strong customer authentication implemented by the banks. So basically it's even less chance uh, of fraud uh, rather than uh, paying uh, with a card because strong customer authentication is in place. So you have to confirm with your bank by using um, your phone, your PIN, your confirmation, OCP is depending on the country, on the bank. So basically, you, it's very difficult. I say it's not impossible because fraud is everywhere. Everything you do, there's some clever people overcoming your... your um, uh, um, but strong customer authentication implemented in Europe and UK by banks it's, it's a good protection. Mm -hmm. However, that is just one part, it's the first step to get to the bank to initiate the payment. If we're talking about the account information service, when basically you pass the data from the bank, the data of the consumer from the bank to the business, it can be a lending company, credit issuing a company which is doing credit scoring, so basically they operate with this data then it's the responsibility of the merchant to make sure that the data is kept securely. Uh, yeah, so data is something like to get out of the bank your data, which today uh, open banking technology is safe, but then we're coming back to the previous reality when it's responsibility of the companies who obtain this data to make that uh, make sure it's the, the, the data is secure. Yeah. So it's a, it's a work from both ways. So I wouldn't say that it's an issue of open banking only, that's issue of any payments. Yes, it is secure to get the open uh, data from uh, by open banking from the banks, but then it's other side. We need to be careful with data in any case. Card payments, uh, wallet payments, banking payments, it's a responsibility of receiver of data to control it and to control the access to the data. Mm -hmm. it's, it's an ugly truth, isn't it, about, about payments, about the risk of fraud, but it's very, very reassuring to hear that EconPay takes it very, very seriously. I mean, from what you've said, you, you, you know it inside and out, um, these measures to, to safeguard consumer information uh, and, and prevent financial crime that we, we all hate, you know. Um, in terms of uh, EconPay as a company, you've, you've been in the game for multiple years now, you know. Um, you're, you, you yourself are, are highly experienced in your, in your own position. How, how, you know, following the expo today, how will you go and continue to support businesses who want to, uh, who want to implement open banking? And more importantly, do you have any favorite use cases? All cases which use open banking are my favorite. <laughs> Good answer. So yeah, obviously we work with so many different industries. Uh, the, my case that I love, it's um, 
I love personally the luxury products, for example, where the average checks are quite high. So when you pay with a bank, SEPA, faster payments, any payments uh, up to 100,000 pounds or euros, they go instantly via banking trails. So it's very convenient. So we have some uh, business aviation or rent of yachts when the like the pay, the check is quite high. We advise to use open banking because it's instant and there is no issue to transfer quite a large uh, transaction from the consumer bank to the business bank. So basically, large checks are very welcome and uh, to be to use open banking. We're also a uh, good case for for those businesses where they care, where they need to think of third party um, third party uh, deposits. So basically, before taking a payment from someone, the business need to secure that the account belongs to that person who wants to make a deposit. So before to take a payment, we actually check using account information service if this bank account belongs to the payer. If it does belong, we, then we allow the person to pay. So basically it's a very good uh, case for companies like loan companies uh, uh, or others where they really need to secure or authorize the, the person who is paying. So um, businesses uh, where the flow funds are in and out, uh, where you want to pay out to your um, freelancers, for example. So it's a good cases. For example, online schools today, <laughs> it's quite common online <laughs> to go online and study something. So basically you need to accept payment from the students for the lesson, but at the same time you need to pay out to the teachers for the same lesson. So it, uh, we provide that as well, and these cases are quite uh, welcome uh, at take on pay. Um, yeah, so there, I say there is, there is no limit to open banking industries. I, I'm, I'm asked quite oftenly which business should use open banking. I will say everyone. There is no limits to that, uh, and there's a good, uh, good uh, reasons why. So basically, again, as as long as your provider knows what they're doing, as long as they can advise how to implement open banking in the best way for your business, then it's the way to go. Absolutely, I think um, if there's anything for me that's the main takeaway from this event is that open banking is limitless, and it, it has, you know. A, a, an endless number of applications that they can bring benefits for, to both merchants and the consumer, um, which I've, I think you've done really, really well to, to highlight in during this conversation. Um, FinTech Futures is is uh, uh, one of the leading uh, media companies in the, the FinTech space and the finance space. And uh, we, we attend a lot of events all over the world um, and well, in my, my calendar, for example, I'm, I'm here, there and everywhere, all the time. Um, I hope you pay for tickets with open bank trails. <laughs> oh yes, look, I wouldn't use anything else. Um, but I think it's, it's really, really interesting being in my position as a, as a journalist for FinTech Futures um, and, and getting the opportunity to speak to all of these different companies. Um, in terms of EcomPay, why was it uh, important to you that we, we had this conversation today, that, that you got this sort of media coverage? For us, EcomPay, we're not, uh, I wouldn't, I want, I don't want to have this mass market approach. For us, it's important to help the business, assist the business. So not just add additional or another payment method to checkout page. We want to make sure that helps business to grow, to cast the coast, uh, to reach new markets. That's why we have real people, real people talking to business, talking to you, talking to our yeah. partners. So building the conversations, it's important for us. So we make sure that we support our clients, support our merchants, support our partners. I mean, I hate COVID time when we had to do all the meetings online. And after that, I mean, the business are progressing so much faster when we start meeting people again. I think that's important. I mean, even I hope today, our conversation today, I mean, we're learning some more, just talking to each other and new questions are coming out just in, during the conversation. So yeah, face to face is important and for EcomPay it's important to know, so our clients know, we're real people, we know the pain of the businesses and we want to assist and help the businesses.
That is a very, very good answer. I think you, when we were in COVID, you know, it was just like, oh, it's just a business, it's just online. And I think maybe sometimes that's where a lot of businesses maybe trip up in the fact that they, they, they don't develop their personality enough. But, you know, if anything, to take away from this video is, is that, you know, EconPay is, is run by real experts in their field and real people who are, who are here and actively ready to, to help their clients. And I think it's, it's been an absolutely fascinating conversation. Olga Karablina, it's been fantastic. Thank you, Thank you so Thanks. much. Thank you.